Welcome guys to Miranda Detailing. So we are at the bays in Chicago. So in today's episode, we're gonna be working with Alan from AM Details. Now, if you know AM Details and you've been following our channel for a while, you know that there's a little bit of a connection with us and Alan, and we're gonna be talking about that in this video. So we have this really gross Durango that's in. It's a perfect example with all this mud and grime on it. We're gonna clean this thing up and show you some methods that I have picked up from this dude. This is Alan. Alan from AM Details. He is visiting us here from Scotland, correct? Right. Now, we're gonna be demonstrating some of his products and techniques, and it kind of all started with Alan, especially with some of the techniques that you see on our channel. One in particular, being the APC rinse. That's something that you may see on our channel all the time. Well, it came from this guy here and we kind of adapted it into our own method and, and technique. And perhaps you guys have followed the same thing. So let's get into cleaning this first and uh, go through some of the methods and some of the, the safe ways to do it using the AM Details line. What would be your plan of attack on this vehicle? Pre-rinse, let's just use water, rinse the thing down, get as much off as we can, then APC rinse. Okay, awesome, let's do it. So initial rinsing is done. That's just important to get the majority of the junk off. Now here's where the magic happens and it's due to this method, due to the chemical as well. Using the APC from AM Details, there's some really cool features of this product that we're gonna ask Alan about. You can use pretty much any APC. Right. We, we've been it's using handy. Super Clean, I mean, whatever ones you can get your hands on, but it's the method that counts. Be safe as well if you're a mobile detailer working out in the sun keep an eye on it, don't let things dry, that's kind of an obvious thing. But let's spray this on and we're gonna allow for some dwell time, but what's so special right, yeah. about so your APC? As you spray that on uh, down the side of the car. So this APC was originally made just to be a bug remover. Ah. Well, that's what we briefed out to our chemists when we were building this product. So we didn't want it to be some crazy high alkaline APC. So it actually sits around about nine, 9.5, depending on how you're gonna mix it up at your area or how the water is on the day, basically. Um, what's coming out of your tap. And then uh, we use some clever little enzymes for helping rip through that bug. What ended up happening was detailers and other YouTubers in the community started using it for many other things. And we figured out it's really good for cleaning down road salts, road grime, interior leather. Pretty much if you can clean something, it's an all around safe product. That's it awesome. is a ready to use product out the bottle because our range was originally designed for we've detailed your car. Um, you need to be able to use this simply without having to think about diluting or anything. It was for the, you know, the customer. But what ended up happening was we made them so powerful for the customer because you might have someone using an unprotected car that the professional can then work it out to their balance and dilute it down if required. Ah, that's nice. That is really nice. Yeah, so I mean... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When we're using this product as well, of course, you're using it in the retail, uh, we call it a 500 ml bottle. Um, you can get a one liter, but for you guys, it's stick it in a pump sprayer and just simply put it on. That's nice, yeah. Nice I mean, and easy. the small little hand like this, maybe for your DIY or your at-home detailing, of course, as a professional, you're not gonna be doing this all the time. Right. Put it in this pump bottle, much, much easier, much faster. So we usually say for the retail customer, it's like your high impact areas, exactly what you're doing. It'd be the front end. You'd be doing your wing mirrors, and then like we've done, if it's in the winter time, you'd maybe get your sides and your rear with the salts. Exactly, yeah. So a nice, generous amount of the APC and allow some Leave breakdown it to time. Do its work. Exactly. I usually say the amount of time it takes you to walk around the car and apply it is the amount of time for this product to work. Perfect. It's really quick, powerful. Awesome. awesome. Then we're going to rinse it off and we're going to rinse from the bottom up. The reason for the bottom up, and I know a lot of people will say, but you're going to go up then come down, is if we now spray from up here, so if I spray here, the water is now going to rinse down this car. And we're not entirely sure, has this pressure washer hit all the parts? Because it's the pressure washer that's going to do the cleaning, right? So this APC is going to soften up all the dirt that you can see on the car. But we need the pressure washer to come through, through the dirt, hit the paint and pull it off. So it's the pressure washer that you want to think is doing the cleaning. The chemicals are just going to break it down and assist that. So if you can get used to using chemicals, let them work, not you work. Because many people would scrub with this now. Mm. You'll get a car quicker, faster, safer. Mm. 
So here, no agitation as of yet. Still some stuck stuff, Look but that's okay. Look out behind the mirror, that's crazy. Oh, that's not stuck, that's actually just coming out from behind the mirror. Yeah, so the APC had time to sit and loosen that up. So already we are cleaning, I don't know, 80, 90% of it without even agitation. And basically we just work around the vehicle and uh, clean it without even touching it first. This is one of the safest ways to remove all this heavy junk before we contact wash. All right, already, this is all of the hard work done by the chemical itself, chemical and water. No agitation as of yet. So really, really fast and effective right? and safe. And you imagine that was like a protected ceramic or something car, it's gonna be even better results. Exactly, and this is safe to use on ceramic coating vehicles as well. 100%, I think that's something guys miss, guys and girls miss that ceramic coatings generally have pH resistance built into them. So actually, even though this is just PH9, a really nice product to use on any surface, any vehicle, when you're cleaning ceramics, it's nicer to go in a bit harsh. So this chemical is fine, but yeah, that statement, you can go in with like a PH13 and help strip your coating down. So it'll actually bring it back to life if you want. So let's get to foaming it and uh, washing it with your line of chemicals here. So you said this already has protection on it, correct? Uh, I don't know, actually. It's been patchwork know. done. Lots of people have been playing with this. Ah, uh, okay. So since we just really don't know, I have put a couple of ounces of bubbles into the foam can, and I know you can put this foam it into your bucket. Different methods of doing this. We have the multiple buckets here, but we can, as you may know on our channel, we foam it and go right to contact washing it with all the foam on there. And there's just different ways of doing it. I know you guys have a different way of doing it, yeah, I do it a little in bit your different. business, um, but these are just different ways of doing it, different techniques. And again, I always say, you know, you find your niche, you find your methods that work well for you and your demographic. Um, because you can be spending two hours washing your car if you're not charging for it appropriately. So, in this case, we're going to foam it down and contact wash it, and we'll go from there. And that's it. So, I feel a lot of people waste product by doing the rather nice... Type YouTube snow foaming. That's the way I do it. <laughs> yeah, right? But it's fun. Sometimes you gotta have that balance between fun and saving money, right? Yeah. So if this is just the soap, then it's just pH neutral. It's not really cleaning much. It's just a lubricant now. Exactly. Yeah. And, and my method, the way that I've adapted it again, is like the pre wash, the APC rinsing was my main cleaning part. And now I'm going into the agitation just do where your it's just. Wash. Yeah. It's, it's lubrication yeah. Um, and, and the agitation part. It's not so much heavy, heavy cleaning because right. we did a lot of that. Now, each vehicle is going to be different. You might have to change it up if we have like a super muddy vehicle. That method may change a little bit. So learn to be adaptable and, and learn to switch on the fly too. Totally. In our shop, it's, we're usually doing a brand new car that's never been on. So brand new to us. So it could be a second hand car, brand new car, or it's a ceramic. So we're wanting that kind of pH 12, pH 13 snow foam cut either to declog the coating on a maintenance wash yeah. or to rip through all the dirt before we're physically touching the car. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, and see, here's a perfect example of different demographics, your business focusing on different types of customers right. in a different physical area Whole different as part well. Of the world. Exactly, different part of the world. You, you get different weather, different humidity, all that stuff. And we're in Richmond, Virginia, dealing with heat and humidity and all this other crazy stuff, as well as just our demographics. So right. don't stick too much to the rules that you may see of detailing. Learn the basics and the principles, but learn to adapt to your own style because you don't want to be stuck in a box. The charge right for that. Right? Charge so appropriately. If you're, if you're in a market where you're charging where you're at and, and the demographic can't get to the kind of budget for the techniques and stuff that you would do to your own car, yep. you still got to make money. So just have a really good business, drive a really good standard. But, you know, make those adjustments that brings the time and the product amount into the budget. Exactly. That's very good. And that'll just take some time to learn. We had to learn and started from the base, like cheap, cheap prices and just climbed up from there until we hit that sweet spot with our prices where we're profitable and still fast. 
You know, out of the whole two days of this amazing event, this is the first time I've sat and just washed the car normally. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. I get to have a chat with my buddy and we get to clean up this truck because uh, all the other ones have been like little short intros into some of our more specialist chemicals. Yep. Yep. Whereas our little relationship come from Wash Basics and YouTube, right? Exactly. And I mean, I learned so much here from Alan as well as a bunch of other guys. But do that. I encourage you to do that. Learn from different people because you're going to be picking up all these different tips. You're not going to see me do exactly what Alan does or what, you know, other people do. It's kind of that nice combination of all these different detailers and all these different techniques that we kind of morphed and adapted into our own. Learn, learn to do that. You'll feel better about your work uh, as well. And you don't, you won't feel like you're trapped into this box of rules that you have to do this or you have to do that. Right. And this event's been super cool. All the different levels of creator, all the different platforms that creators are from. You know, nope. like, I, I'm thinking it's pretty safe to say that mm. I was, I'm from a completely different generation of YouTube creator. And then because of my illness and everything else that's going on, I haven't made solid, regular thought about content in about four or five years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Whereas it was like, that was when you were starting out and you were like, hey, what do you think about this? And we were passing on that info. Now you guys are crushing it. You know, you're regular, you're consistent, you're using different products, keeping yourselves at the forefront of the industry. Yeah. It's really cool to see. It really is. It really is. If we feel like maybe the next generation, you know, we learn from you guys. And it's going to be me. When I get back into content, I'll be the new guy again. You'll be the new guy again. <laughs> and I don't think there is real good protection on here. I think it was cleaned and decon, but that's about it. Then it got really dirty again. Well, we did a decon video earlier, so we ripped all the iron off the hood. Ah. Um, and then that was pretty much it. I think it's had a couple of disaster videos done, so people have been like really pressure testing. Oh, yep. It's had stuff on it, then gone into Yep. So yeah, it feels smooth. We don't need a clay bar or clay mitt, but usually with my method, as we're washing with the foam, I'll take the clay mitt or clay towel, or even clay bar, and, uh, and kind of clay as we wash. Another technique that I picked up from another detailer. So. That works really well for us. Very, very fast and efficient. All right, let's go ahead and rinse this off. And we're gonna move on to wheels and tires really quick. And again, we didn't do wheels and tires first. Why? Because we're not in the full sun. We don't have to worry about water spots or anything drying on here if we rinse it. Um, so again, it's just different methods, different techniques. If you're a mobile detailer working by yourself, maybe start on wheels and tires first and then move on to the rest of the paint. Oh, I knew it was gonna happen. Did you get that? Okay, good. Hey, like, oh, there. <laughs> we ha I wasn't going to bring it up. I wasn't going to bring it up. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch this up. The lance is okay, but I actually prefer just the snub nose like this. This is what I work with most. I started doing this, a little tip from another fellow detailer, and he says, eh, it just kind of helps with lubrication and kickback from these brushes, and it seems to work pretty well. So it's a slightly alkaline wheel cleaner. You can leave it on. It's pretty safe to use on everything. And you also have an iron remover as well. That's right. not like a wheel cleaner, but it's an iron specific remover for paint yeah, and so, wheels. And some people like using it as a wheel cleaner or even as a, as a wash soap, ah. because it's uh, got such a great thick viscosity and we put really cool chemicals in there for help for the cleaning. So it's not just doing the phosphorus iron fallout remover type cleaning. Yep. What it's carried and what's embodied inside it will clean the surface as well. So ah, that's super. nice. So we that's know nice. some details would just do what we did, then iron this car and do the two bucket with that as the result. That's a cool method. Crazy. All right, that's a good technique. So you can also do like a little arch flush, get the areas you missed. And then as you've seen, I like to leave the chemical to work. So in your environment, if you're at the showroom, I would probably do both at the same time. Then I would start cleaning the rear, only because generally the front's dirtier, so leave the chemical to work longer. Good, good method. And when I was speaking to uh, Jess, she puts it in a foam pump spray. So oh, she likes to foam nice. It up, but it's still the uh, AM wheels. That's nice. Yeah, foamers, like our a IK foamers, we love them. When you're working maybe in a shop environment or like a home garage environment, yeah, that just speeds things up. We made it fluorescent orange because originally, see it coming through? 
originally, um, back when we first made this product, I think you guys had the same in the US. Brands weren't really making these darker or black type wheels. So everyone was getting their wheels and powder coating them black. Mm. And it made it a nightmare to see where the chemical was. So that's why we went down the fluorescent orange line. And again, it's why in the iron we went fluorescent yellow. Yep, you can see it. And you can see it breaking down dirt on the tire. Very yeah. nice. So here's one of the most famous wheel brushes, Easy Detail. There's a bunch of other companies that make similar type brushes. These are great to get into the wheelbarrows. Nice and deep. And they're soft enough bristles, they're not going to scratch anything, not cause any damage. And you can work around these spokes. And the reason why I foamed it is this kickback. These brushes will have a little bit of kickback. And the foam does help it. It's not going to completely eliminate it, but it does help with that. And you can kind of see where you've been with this foam as well. And a tip for everyone, I like to kind of start at the tire valve and work the way around. Oh, that nice. Way, if something's happened, if you just make it a habit, if you're working, it's a speedy environment or a product you can't see or you get distracted, you'll be able to work out where you've been. That's nice. Okay, yeah. So start, go clockwise or counterclockwise, yeah. depending on where you are in the world. What else have we got in here? <laughs> work stuff brushes. Some nice. of my favorite brushes. So these are going to be great for your lug nuts. And the black ones especially, not only are they chemical resistant, which I think all of them pretty much are, but you get that stiffness in the brush and it's still soft, so we're not going to cause any issues, no damage or anything like that. Then we have our softer flag tip brushes like this that you can use for the face of the wheel. You can also grab a dedicated wash mitt if you want and use that for your wheels. If you have maybe delicate gloss black wheels, you can use that. If you uh, are feeling artistic and wifey always makes fun of me because I'll take this brush and go around the whole wheel like this. And she says, I'm painting the wheel, painting, painting, the a, wheels. painting a picture. Yeah, this takes longer, <laughs> but it is maybe satisfying or whatever if you have time to do that. But use a variety of different brushes like this. It'll speed up the job as They're well. Nice. I like these. Yeah, these are really, really nice. And then we have our tire brushes. Everybody's got their favorite tire brush. This is actually an interesting one. This is a weird, like... This is what we use in the UK as well. Like really? Brush this style, yeah. Okay. We have a nice, stiff brush, but yeah. it's small enough for you to work it into the tire. Very nice. You can scrub it up. Actually, if you want, you can spray some more chemical. Like yeah, all the look junk coming off. Right yep. So spray more chemical here. If you need to put more in the tire, go ahead and do it. My tip with the, the tires is, I don't think we're going to need to do it on these wheels, they look pretty good. Yeah. But if you're needing to do a tar or an iron session, I would do them before I do a dedicated tire scrub. Ah, and the okay. only reason is, some people when they're cleaning them up, they wonder why there's this brown mess here. That's you letting all your chemicals stain the bottom of the rubber. So if you scrub this up now and then you pull it in and go, huh, what's that brown messy mark? Mm. So I do the, I'll do a rinse and I'll touch the tires, but my dedicated tire clean is at the end of my wheel process. Ah, okay, that's cool. That's really good to know. Another really, really good tip. All right, and one more thing, we're gonna hit the, you can't have a separate brush because I don't necessarily like to mix this brush with the fenders and also the wheel face. And for demonstration purposes, instead of running and get another brush, I'm just gonna use this. But I'll have a different, maybe colored brush to do the inside of the wheel wells here because you're gonna get some nasty stuff here and I don't want to rub that back onto the wheel. But for demonstration purposes, we'll do this. And we might need to use a little bit more of aggressive mitt or towel to get that junk down there. If we we're just doing like a quick top up, I would top these up now wet. So I'd use like one of our spray rinse or one of our kind of products like that. Okay. If it was getting uh, just the faces done, at this point we could even hybrid wipe these so they're clean now. So by the time you pull this thing inside to go to your dry, it's already protected and it's done and it's like an area you don't have to worry about. That's nice. All right. Can we use your hybrid sealant on those wet? Can, like spray it on? Brings them up great. All right. Let's try it out. So you started this uh, hybrid line of products how long ago? Three, four years ago, just pre-COVID. It's been that long already? Right. Because you imagine we launched this and I really wanted to help push it and you guys got behind it. Yeah. And it's right at the time where I fell unwell, so I couldn't keep you guys informed or whatever. So the best thing yep. is... Most of you worked out the best ways to use this, but now you got me here and we can show you how this product really works. Okay, good, good. Yeah, there's definitely some tips and tricks we want to share with you when using that product. Uh, so I guess we can show just showing on the wheel and then yeah. we'll show it on the paint. 
So there's a couple of things you can do. You can spray it on in, so it's gonna allow you to get the inside. So use it like a spray rinse product. Ah. And it'll work pretty good. So you can spray it right up in like this. You're gonna get the barrels clean for when you next wanna use the product. But then the faces, if you wanna make sure you're getting like a bit better protection, just a real quick little rub around the alloy. So the hybrid sealant has a full pH resistance. So zero to 13. Wow. Now on this wheel, just from this simple little wipe. And we've seen a couple of guys this weekend look at me and do that, I'd go, wow, or they go, no way. So we've done a couple of, uh, what do you call them, like stress tests already. Yep, yep. Where, and we're wiping it on now. We would say this thing's probably gonna be at its best, at its peak performance, after about six to 12 hours. Wow. But straight after doing this, there's stress tests, there's products like Breakbuster or our pH 13 foam, and it's just saying no. So what would happen if we just rinsed it right now? So we just rinse this down and it's gonna be super good to go. Awesome. So you imagine now this has the protection, the inside barrels will be protected if you clean them up. When you pull this inside and you go and dry your vehicle, that will blow, blow, blow dry super easy and then you can just get your tires dressed. Because dressing tires for me is one of the first, first things you do once you're inside after your drying process. Ah, uh, I remember that. Using like your AM dress, I would remember seeing you spray yeah. it on there and let it dwell dress and soak it, in. Leave it, let it soak. So if the car's leaving, like you guys do a half day work. Yep. So car's leaving in two hours. That's had two hours to dry That's before awesome. your customer drives away. That's awesome. Oh, that is awesome. I've actually never used it on the wheel like that before. Right, so, so if I was to show you like, a, you go and hit that with like some harsh chemicals now, it just yep. in your face. It says no, no. So you get some people are doing this and they're like acid washing their wheels. Wow. So here we got a great product from PNS, Breakbuster, but as the industry knows, she's got a bit of kick to her. Mm -hmm. It'll usually kill the majority of protection if you have it and it can't resist um, chemicals. But here's our hybrid and it's trying to resist and push the brake buster off the wheel already. Yep, it's like beating up. And this has only been on the wheel for how long? Two minutes. Two, Two minutes, minutes of that. So we can leave it on there. And that's full strength brake buster, isn't it? Right, that's straight out the ball. Yep, it's still, still beating. Resisting. So it'll resist, and then it's starting to sheet away where it was. You leave that for six to 12 hours. Yeah, you're gonna get some solid protection. Even your two, three hour turnaround, four hour turnaround type stuff, that's gonna be a sweet set of wheels. You didn't have to get in there with a crazy ceramic. It was almost spray and rinse type for your next time that customer comes back. Yeah, that is awesome. Good, that's a really good quick tip for ceramic protection on your wheels. All right, so now let's talk about using the same stuff on the paint and go through some of those uh, maybe like problem issues that we may have right, with sure, a product yeah. like that. Roll it. All right, so we've got the car. You don't even have to worry about it being dry. Nice. Source being dry, you've done your perfect, you're gonna get the best out of the product. Mm -hmm. So one of the quickest ways we have now find when adapting this product is if you do it in your drying process, you can do it with your drying towel. Ah. So do your drying towel wipe down because we're always worried about the streaking it was giving you if someone cut the ratio wrong. Yep. This product come about, it's not from this industry, it's from industrial concrete ceiling industry. So it's from That's like cool. large buildings, how you would protect a large building. Yeah. You put a product like this onto, uh, spray it onto a product surface and then use the water and it's a water emulsifier. So once the water does is it erodes away the carrier and when it evaporates you leave the product that it was carrying behind. So if you imagine it's in this great, amazing skeleton holding all the SiO2, pH resistance, hydrophobics together, lands on the surface, the skeleton goes, I will bond to you, because it's a polymer, so it'll stick to anything. Yep. And then when you come with the water, it erodes the skeleton and leaves it bonded on. That's awesome. So it's super cool. I'm working a large area here. I can see Phil is terrified. He's like, no, you gotta do it in short, <sighs> short little bits. So we can buff this off. It's a white car, so it's not going to show the streaking so bad, but we can see yeah, it's there. Yeah, you see a little bit of like right? that residue, maybe. It's a little bit of that residue that's on. It's super slick already. Oh, gosh, it's right? so slick. But now, after further testing, the best thing to do is just leave that. Carry on with the rest of your vehicle, do what you're going to do, then come back with a damp towel method. Like you're going to do a, a water-soluble Modesta kind of ceramic coat yep. removal. So if you want to do this vehicle, you can either do it with the water already in there, yep. or do it in your drying phase, then just come and buff off the residue that's left. Or if you want to just lay more product down, give a better, what I find more even protection, you kind of focus on where it is. Yep. Rub this on now as it is. Or you then come back with a water, spray a couple of bits of water into microfiber and catch that little bit of streaking that you had on there. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. Let me get it. You know, six to 12 hours, this will be at its best. But yep. right now it is on it, it's laid down. Did you use this one? No, you use this, this one, one to apply. This one for doing the uh, application, yeah. So ah. load that up. Bingo. Or I wouldn't say spray on a vehicle, usually because it will go on the windows, go where maybe you don't want it to be. But now it's the counterintuitive, what we were teaching at the start, if you're doing the quick short cycle, if you like. Yeah. It was two spritzes work of foot by foot. Now it's like, no, don't worry about it. We've tested it this way and it doesn't lose any durability or any application. Okay. So it makes it nice. kind of easier for when you're doing those bigger processes. So it's, it, it's water friendly, which, which is nice. Again, for the mobile detailer, oh. that is nice. And we have. learned that when UK guys were saying, hey, I actually applied your hybrid sealant and gave someone six to 12 months protection in a misty rain this morning. And it was a breeze. Yeah. Right. Because as they're laying it down, we don't have to wait for this to cure. Yes. You know, three to six to 12 hours, that's going to be at its peak, at its best. Yep. But it's down and leaving a good finish immediately and already applying protection immediately. That's awesome. That so is awesome. it's a hybrid ceramic. It is not a ceramic coating. What's right. the pros, what's the cons? This is going to give you full pH resistance. That's why it's going to fight those harsher chemicals that want to come after this product. It's going to give you zero to 13. It's also going to give you the ceramic hydrophobics you're looking for. So we'll see that water, but also the sheeting behavior. This really wants to sheet. It doesn't want dirt to stick to it. It's not a static type coating. So you may have seen these, some of them we spray on, rinse off, and they almost hold the dirt because they're really super static. Ah, uh, yeah. This is a sheeting product. That's what it's going to do. It is not going to give you scratch or swirl resistance. This is not a quartz hardening base coat layer product with something on top. Exactly. Right? Exactly like I explained, we've got this amazing scale and it'll stick to anything, it'll stick to plastics, it'll stick to metal, the windscreen, anything you want. So hybrid can be used on anything. Awesome. Sticks to it, water soluble dissolves, bang, the protection's left. That's awesome. Very, very nice. Yeah, I, I can't wait to actually spray this down and see what the hydrophobics Dude, are behavior. Let's like. So that is nice. And, and then again, I'll show you a few of the other hybrid pieces that we're bringing out soon. Uh, we talked about when you first came out with the product of applying it, you could dilute that. And I was actually diluting it maybe one to one or one to two in another bottle. That way it already kind of diluted it. And I found that in our area with our high humidity and heat, it worked a little bit better or dampen your applicator towel. So like soak it in water, wring it out so it's damp and then use that as your applicator. Right. If you have a dry surface. So there's, there's multiple ways of doing it. Uh, but it's water friendly. It, it likes yeah. water. It plays well with it. It's and like if you get a little glass. bit of... Everyone has their technique that they like, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Find out what works for you in, in your area. But that works really well for us. The damp towel method actually works the best. Instead of having to like dilute everything again, which is kind of annoying. the hybrid glass. If you were to wipe this down, you would clean the glass. So you got some new products on the way. And it's going to leave the hybrid protection behind on your glass. So this is like using the AM Rain. So it's a solo product if you want, or use it to top up. Nice. It's crazy. It's also really good if you want to bring up like chromes on a vehicle or exhaust. Works really well. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. And then we have the other one, hybrid rinse. So this is going to be more like what I think people thought hybrid sealant was going to be. This kind of spray rinse technology, SiO2. It's what most of the other manufacturers are kind of bringing out on a way of its application method so it doesn't use the same technology as the hybrid sealant ah. but it is super cool you find an unprotected area and for the home user it's just a very simple we're going to spray it on this door handle for example and we're just going to rinse it's crazy it's almost dried itself but look how super tight and hydrophobic it is that is awesome i can do this uh winger if you want So the cool thing with that is that's coming in concentrate. So you guys can put it on through your snow foam lands, through your IK pump sprayer, or you can put it in your own larger volume for just like we did with APC, put it on your areas. And it's a great top up for your type of service. You know, you've already laid down the ceramic. You just want to do it. Hybrid detailer, some people think that's where it would fall, but the hybrid detailer, I would say, is right in where the majority of people are bringing out SiO2 sprays. It's in your kind of bead maker and that kind of realm of stuff, as in it's giving you, it is giving you a month to two months hydrophobic ceramic protection, right? Whereas this is a spray on, rinse off, no streaking, no issues. You could achieve it with the other two products, but you've got to work out what's going to work in your level, your, your what you do. Yep. Whereas that hybrid spray and rinse is just, it's out the bottle safe as you can use. 
That is awesome. Very, very nice. It's now the stuff you sprayed on this, did you already rinse it oh, off? I need to wipe it down. I forgot to wipe the glass down. So it is a glass cleaner. You imagine you were gonna clean the glass cleaner here with your favorite, clean the glass up. But it's now putting the protection on. Whoa. <laughs> so you nice. imagine you just do a normal glass clean and you're putting protection on a vehicle when you're using it. No need to use a dedicated product and wait for it to dry. That is nice. You know, the beauty of all these hybrid products is, you know, their hybrid technology is in the polymer mixtures and all that stuff. But it's kind of also a play on words I found as in like it does multiple things right. also. So it's quickening up our jobs. It's making things so much easier to clean and protect, to maintain, you know, the beauty of these products and maintaining. It just makes our jobs so much easier and so much faster and more profitable. So awesome all right guys so that is it this thing is well it's half clean because we demoed on one side right. of it we're leaving it dirty for other guys to wash and demo <laughs> stuff on the other side but you get the picture using products like this it's going to speed up your detailing process it's making things more enjoyable it's making things look incredible your customers are going to be happy you're going to be happy thank you very much and don't forget to learn from other detailers learning from this guy years ago it has just changed our business dramatically learn from other detailers, reach out to them, network. So thank you, Alan. It's been a privilege. It has been. Great man. watching your channel grow and watching you guys kick ass. It is awesome. It's due to you and so many other guys. So thank you for all your support. Thank you. So guys, if you're interested in these products, check out the links down below. Don't forget to use code Miranda10. You will save 10% at Car Supplies Warehouse. Don't forget to subscribe to all of the other creators that are here making incredible videos. I will have them linked down below. Do not forget, go to Alan's channel, AM Details, and Smash go all bell. the way. Ping. Ping. <laughs> go all the way to the back uh, into his early videos and watch them. You will learn a ton. We're coming back. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell so you don't miss stuff. And we'll see you guys later. Ciao.